Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and welcome to the optimization series. This class will be the first part and it's a beginner class, beginner optimization and making good connections. And we're going to cover everything. We're going to cover how to make the connections, why to make the connections and when to make the connection. The end result will be much better embroidery in a professional level. So let's Let's get started. So what we're talking today is we're going to be talking about this whole entire class and a series of three building up difficulty is optimization and making great connections. And this little bug guy, um, buggy, I guess, or Frank, I'll call him Frank. So Frank is just a great little bug. And you couldn't really auto digitize it because it's not vectors, but if you were manually digitizing it, it, you would end up with a lot of jump stitches. If you went, did this foot, it's going to jump from here to the start of the next one. And you would end up with a nasty jump stitches across the way or trims your machine. If your machine has a trimmer, it'll trim them. So you could probably have one, two, three, four, five, probably about 15 trims. And we're going to get the jump stitches and the trims down to none. Now, a lot of people ask, why do we do this? It's better embroidery. It's better for your machines. And it's at a much professional level, a much more professional level. It's a difference between beginners and and seasons digitizers um, digitizers make connections you can't get rid of all of the jump stitches of course but you can do a pretty good job of it and what it takes to do it is to plot your design out a lot of digitizers can sit and figure out how they're gonna do it so for example I would look at this bug Frank Frank the bug and I see it in layers. Now, people don't always see it that way, but this is what the goal is to focus on. And we wanna start digitizing with the bottom layer. Now, to me, the bottom layer is going to be the feet, these leg things. I guess they're not feet are down here. Maybe we'll put shoes on them too. So to me, the bottom layer is that. The next layer is the head, and then after that, the antennae, and then his body part is going to sit at the top. And that's how I immediately see it. And I've already plotted in my mind, I'm going to go around and do all the legs, and then the antenna and the head and do it all in that order. If it is difficult for you to figure out, and it does, it's a skill, it takes a while to plot it out. Um, but if it's hard for you to envision it that way, then here's a really good suggestion. What I want you to do is take whatever graphic you're using and print it out and grab some pens and plot it out or pencils um, that you can erase or pens that you can erase or colors or number them. And then you can do the plotting and know by the time you start digitizing, you have it all set and you know exactly what you're going to do and you're going to get to the business of digitizing. So I have kind of given you example. I've kind of done it. I doodled on Frank. So this is Frank's twin. Um, and I'm going to, I am going to make him bigger. We're not going to leave him up here the whole time, but I just want you to see how my doodles work. So the first that I saw and I played around with colors too and what it's labeled, I, uh, I ended up scratching out black for the fourth layer because I, you couldn't really see what I was doing. You can kind of see it. So I traded colors and I just used, um, gel pens and I just, while I was doing it, I just plotted it out. And the first is I decided I want it in black because it makes a little more sense. And well, all I did was I took a red pen and I plotted it out. Now this is where we're going to walk and make a connection. So instead of, instead of having a jump stitch, that's going to show from here to here, we're going to walk it around and we're going to go here and back and walk it around and here and back. The key part is and back. And then we're going to walk over to the other side and we're going to do it like that. And then we're going to walk up and we're going to do something cool with the antenna. 
and back the antenna and back and we're going to end it here so we're going to start here and we're going to end here and we're not going to have any jump stitches like i said can you imagine how many there would be jump stitches from instead of going across it would go from here to here and this one would go all the way to here he would look like a bug Frank would be like a bug in a cob's web, a spider's web by the time you finished it. And I find this way of approaching designs really helps if you can doodle and draw. It's a skill we're trying to learn and it takes practice. And I think it's a lot easier to practice on pen and paper and draw yourself a map. Grab crayons, grab anything. You can do it a little bit differently. You can color it in or not color it in. You could, you know, take a brighter color and just make your paths and put arrows on it so you know what you're doing. That way, again, by the time you hit hatch and you're ready to do this, you don't have to worry about the plotting. You've already plotted out and you can just attack the design and get through it. And you'll be really happy once you learn how to make these connections and don't have jump stitches. You'll love it. Your machine will love it. You won't get any pulling. You won't have wasting thread. You won't spend a whole lot of time trimming. I know people think that trimming, well, that's what they're there for. They're supposed to trim. Yes, but if you're doing this design and you have 10 trims, which actually isn't bad, maybe for a complicated design, but each trim takes approximately, approximately six seconds to do. Okay, so that's only 60 seconds or one minute. So it's going to take you one minute longer to finish this design. So what if you do, what if you have more, say on the head or the antenna, and it adds another 10? Well, that's two minutes. So now you've added two minutes to your machine time and your 20 trims and, uh, you know, slowing down the machine, doing everything. Say you had to do this design, uh, you know, 20 times on a shirt that's going to add up really quickly. And if you're selling designs and you're giving this to someone and it and you could save them that much time, this is the way to do it. They will be impressed and your work will be elevated because it is done properly. Old school maybe, but it's still the right way to do it. So make connections, make good connections, reduce the number of jump stitches wherever possible, and it will make your embroidery so much better. See, I told you guys we'd be an embird. I just really like the introduction. I covered everything and I was thinking I might forget some things, in, you know, and it's just the background. So hopefully everyone understands what we're doing. Now let's go ahead and do it in Ember. So I hope you've printed out the uh, Frank 2 and have understood, like marked it up and understood how we're going to plot it because now we're actually going to get at it. So let's bring in Frank. So click on image and we're going to import it. The shortcut is control I, but I don't use a whole lot of shortcuts, but that's okay. And level one Frank. I called it. So do you want to scale the image to fit into your current hoop? Yes, but we are going to make adjustments for it. Now, um, this is, you know, not quite the size that we want. Mr. Frank bug is going to be pretty small. So we need to go up here to image, click on it again, and this is what you want. So control alt I edit image window. And this is where we can quickly size frank to what we want it to be and one of the rules i'm saying rules because i don't often stick to them but one of the rules that i do stick to is that we want to always digitize at the size that we want our final design to be it's really important so let's click on that and we can from here we can crop it so it's closer to uh, Frank, and that makes it a lot easier to start with and down a little bit because we want this guy to fit in the four by four hoop. So now that we have it cropped, let's go here to the size and we want it to, if you click on the arrows, 
we can go right here and we can pick 3.94 just quickly and yes and that is we have to actually do it on the bigger side my bad but that will make sure that it fits into our four by four hoops see the size there then all you have to do is click apply and now we're right on what we want to be it's small um but you know what that's where we want to be so when we were plotting it out we discussed the layers so we want to do the legs and then the antenna um, first so we can hide all of our jump stitches we want them hidden under right here is going to be fill stitches and these will be satin stitches but we want to hide them so you know instead of having everything jumping around we're just going to walk around that's what i call it i call it walking around so let's get started we're going to click on the outline open path over here and over to the right you have the choices of everything if you want satin stitches which we're going to do up here applique or border and the width of everything um, sketch is a cool one we might use that on the outline so but i want single stitch uh, let's zoom in i just zoomed a little bit with my mouse and this is where we get into the plotting so if you were to start right here and go down this would be one pass on it and then go to the next one now the problem is this one is two passes so it's going to look different you have to think about that and sometimes you just sit and look at the screen um, or write it out like i said before and figure it out so what we want to do is start here and go up and back walk over to the next leg and go up and back and keep going and that way each leg is gonna have two passes sounds easy it is if you take it little piece by piece um, so let's go ahead and do that so I want to click click and I'm just left clicking and then we want to go back now if you want it to look thicker you don't have to put them exactly on you could leave a little space if you wanted to it would be you know two running stitches but i like the look of having it all together so here you don't have to match up here because this is going to be underneath here's where we walk and we go to the next one now perfect so far least amount of nodes as possible that's always a stand thing important slide it over i call it lots of sliding in in embered see how we're progressing now the image is just a doodle and this is a great way for you to make original designs is just doodle i have a couple blogs that i'll be putting out that have you know get yourself a doodle book and doodle things because i'm not good at drawing what i am good at is embroidery so just because my doodle image says something doesn't mean that's how i want to do it like he's not a perfect shape and his head is kind of wonky and we won't even talk about those antenna right but we can fix all that in embroidery quite easily and that's what we're going to do and that's you know it's just great it's fun to be able to use a lot of uh artistic creation and you try stuff it's it's almost like playing i would say um, and I quite enjoy it. And so what I was saying is make sure the, the, the walking lines are tucked in so they don't see, you don't see them when we're done because we're covering all this with fill stitches and it won't show. But if you make the join out here, it is going to show. So make sure they're hidden. And if you are, you know, kind of adjusting stuff afterwards, make sure you go back in and make sure these are underneath. We'll double check for that, but just want to make sure. So now the next one, you don't have to run all the way down here because there's going to be probably satin stitches, but zigzag over now i suggest zigzagging because it's a little bit better than doing you know a direct line across i think it looks better it has a better chance of not being seen and that's kind of what we're going for with our hiding and you can be just you know smack them down you don't have to be particular and oh i need it too close 
um, to anything you don't you don't have to do that so here and I'm I'm making them match I kind of I kind of like that so here I do want that one to match a little bit better now we're on the last leg did you see how fast that was actually to make it uh, you know optimize and made some good connections we have no jump stitches and we've done legs no jump stitches how cool is that so that would have saved us i don't know how many jump stitches quite a few quite a few so now we've done the legs how about we move up and do the antenna because they're also in the back now this is where you have to think about it and the solution once you understand how to do it the solution it's the same as the legs just we're going to be using different stitches so if you just went up and did satin stitch and did the top of the antenna you'd be stuck there and you'd have to trim or you'd have to jump to here or you'd have to jump to here and we're trying to avoid all of that frank should have no jump stitches so what's the solution we go up we walk up and we're going to be in a good position and we're going to do a circle and then we're going to satin stitch down now our walking stitch our connection stitches will all be covered up and then we just walk over and we do the same thing in the next one and we end up here and all of our extra stitches are hidden and I think it's great so why don't we just generate this for now that's fine we know where we left off deselect it this is blue I do want it to be black at some point so we might as well make it black there we go black looking good we can peek in the 3d doesn't look like much yet but honestly it's going to be spectacular once you guys see it so let's do maybe a fill stitch here and i guess we could put a node right here and we could go to shapes now the ellipses the elements are basically the points now this is really small what we're doing we don't need 16 points right we need four and let's left click and drag and we're going to pull out now when you're dragging you can make it any shape that you want and it could go any way that you want i'm thinking about this size i'll check after hit enter and we can generate that guy hmm, let's see how that looks 3d yeah that's a fill stitch if you want to change it it is small enough to change it to a satin stitch let's go to our parameters and we can do auto column and apply and let's see how that looks whoops generate and let's see how that looks that's probably better let's do that let's do that play around you might uh, find you know if you want to change the angle of it you can you can do that so far pretty happy with it now we know we left off right here because that's where I pulled out the shape and now we want to do our satin stitches so let's select our open and this time we're going to change it to satin stitches and right here can you see that little red that's where we're going to start and i want it right up to it and place your first point down you can move it if you want and i think i'm gonna make it a little curvy so just two clicks and then we're gonna curve it up right here I think I'll move this a little bit so you can play around with it and you can tweak it afterwards as well there we go satin looking good deselect it let's check our 3d yep I could tweak that a little bit so it's closer you can also you know play around with it and let's go to right click the parameters and you can play around with it and you can do different things you could do the sketch stitch you can put it on sample and you could do uh you know why not let's see you could do candle wicking and let's do apply well that's obviously not gonna work but you know you can play around and see if you find something that looks a little bit better because you never know or you can create your own motif uh, I put out an ember video about that you could create your own motif that would look great on an antenna why not um, and play around with it and you know come up with some cool stuff red work isn't thick enough a Greek antenna well 
Maybe. He's going to be a groovy guy. Depends what you're doing on him. Frank, we love you. But let's cancel that and go back to what it was. Now, let's keep going. Where are we going to go next? We are going to do the same thing on the next antenna. So where did we leave off? Precisely there. Let's go to it. No jump stitches. Jump free. And I'm going to click way up here and I'm going to bend it so I get a lovely curve. That also makes me happy. Uh, let's generate. There we go. Looking good over here. I'm always checking that. Deselect it and we're going to use a fill and we're going to make it auto column and we are going to remember with uh, people get confused on this the shape i went up to pull down the shape what 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 i can't do it you have to put down your node first that's the only way to do it shape and we're going to do the small ellipse again if you wanted to copy over the other antenna i mean that would be fine as well um you can i don't know i don't think frank has to be perfect so uh, I kind of like it I'll make this one too big <laughs> apparently I made it too big so let's just make it a little bit smaller let's go right there and let's generate it because I like to see what we're doing awesome so far awesome so follow the path that we did we did all the bottom things almost all the bottom things on Frank and I think he's starting to look absolutely fantastic so let's carry on why don't we all right, so we left off here. We know, because there's a red thing there. Let's put it down. Ooh, I forgot to change to satin stitches. And we're gonna go all the way to here. All the way to here, probably here, but I might tweak it. We gotta make sure we cover up our running stitch. That's the one thing, make sure it's covered up. If you were to do the satin like this, um, you can, but you have to go back and move our walking stitch. I'm just going to call them walking stitches because I think that works really well. Let's generate this guy and we're going to have to tweak a little bit. I can see that already, but that's okay. You guys can fiddle around with it and make it look really good. So far so good though. What do you think? Well, he's kind of funny looking, but he'll get better. Trust me, he'll get better. But we have done this whole part with no jump stitches. There are no jump stitches. It goes up, back back over to the next side and then we did the antenna perfectly with no jump stitches there's no jumps between here everything's in the right order that's fantastic so i'd like to point out if you make a plotting mistake which i often do and if you get interrupted and forget where you left off so let's just play out this scenario so i wasn't paying attention and i did the leg here and then, you know, the phone rang or something like that. And I'm like, okay, uh, what do I do? Well, we can see here, let's change the color. So just to make it a little bit easier, we can see what we did. We know we started here. We can look here. We can see, let's click on it. We can see where we started and finished. So, and remember there's little arrows here that shows you the direction and you can just keep going from there. You know you ended there. Now, the real problem is that this one is in the wrong way, but we're just going to ignore that for now. And you can, um, let's do another one because it helps with the example here. Let's, uh, let's do it correctly this time. Here, here. So I'm just showing you guys an example. I'm just going to delete this afterwards. Here and here and there. And there we go. And then you got distracted and busy and generated. Of course, everyone has their autosave on so you won't lose anything. So let's just pretend this one is double. And then you go, oh no, well, what am I going to do? I have all the other legs done and I've got jump stitches. Well, you can add in your running stitch. So let's just go from here to here because that'll attach the two. The problem is right now it doesn't. It's going to stitch out this one and stitch out this one and then go back and stitch out that one. What the heck? That's not going to do. So you got to make sure you optimize it 
by moving it in the right spot. Now we can see logically, uh, I guess it's not really logic because it's going from one side to the other. We just did one or two legs, but you know, we're working with it, right? So logically it's uh, still not in the right order. My goodness, I, I, I did it wrong insert before now it's right okay and you can double check and you can see they put a nice bounding box around it so you can see so it would stitch this one and then go to our join and then go back up and we'd end here and we're done and that's fantastic so if you don't plot it out properly you can fix it you just have to make sure everything is in the right order so you know, while you're practicing, and remember the plotting is difficult, um, practice, 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 and you'll be able to get it right. But if you make mistakes, it's easy to fix. Okay, so we've got all that part, but everything's in order. I've double checked, everything's optimized. The next part we wanna do according to our little list is Frank's head. So let's do that. Let's uh, do a fill shape. Now we ended up here. Uh, I think we'll start, how will we do it? Here, I guess. And uh, I think we can do it in two clicks and have it, nope, not quite. So let's left click, drag, and move it around so we have, still have a nice smooth curve on it. Let's go here, here. I'm liking it. Now, again, remember, you don't actually have to stitch, stick with the drawing because it's just a drawing you can if you want to but you could take the time to make sure you know everything matches out and looks you know proper i think i want this a little curvier it may help you to generate the stitches and then you can see but look i've got a pretty smooth pretty smooth uh curve on it and i like that that's what makes it so much better than the drawing and why don't we pick something this is pretty small but we can do it how about even a random let's do that and see how that looks because you can do it a little bit generate now let's look at our 3d yeah see that kind of looks like frank buggy <laughs> and the color i'm actually going to leave it red because he is like a tropical bug and he's pretty cool so you can play around you can see what other stitches will look good you could just leave it as a fill stitch if you wanted just plain i thought it was cool to incorporate just it gives it a little bit of texture and design so on our list of what we're doing what is our next step our next step is the body ah let's do the body we should be able to do this very quickly so let's go we ended off here so let's kind of stick with that and we're going to click right about there and make the curve and right about there and make the curve. And I'm going to try to match it up because I'd like them to be a little more symmetrical, I think. Not necessarily, but I kind of think so. And we're not going to bother. See, just because it's uh, on the artwork doesn't mean you have to do it. I'm not going to bother with anything thick or thin or anything on this because that's just a product of my doodling and we know I'm not a great drawer. So uh, that's just a guideline for me and that's exactly what I'm using it for, just a guideline. Now, so far we're looking good. Let's generate this and let's take a peek. Ooh, I want it a different color because Frank, again, is a tropical bug and he is pretty groovy. So left click, drag down to change the color. I think we're looking good. Yep, so far so good. Uh, I like his stitches on his back. You may want to tweak it a little bit. I would like his body to be a bit smoother on this side, but you know, it's not it's not too bad. I don't mind it too much. Um, but you can tweak, you can play around. Once you get the basics done, you can play around with it and you can add and try different things. It's very creative. So I would expect that everybody's bugs are going to be completely different. Frank can have a facelift every time you do them. So, okay, moving on. We're really rocking this out. So moving on, we have a little bit of stylish decoration to do here. Now this is just part of who Frank is. 
and uh, I just thought it would look cool. Now, we do not want to cut holes in this. I'm going to do satin stitches, and they look really good over top of fill stitches. Now, if this was huge, it would be a different story, but this is pretty small, and you will create more stitches, actually, believe it or not, try it and see, if you make a cutout, and we don't want to do that. So don't cut anything, and this will save you time too. You don't have to worry about it. The, le the least amount of steps, jumps, trims, nodes, the better. Okay, so let's do it. That being said, let's do it. So I click, click the fill one. We're going to go directly to auto column. Let me pull that in if I can. My computer doesn't like it. Yeah, okay. We just needed this just a little bit bigger. Uh, it'll uh, uh, show the underlay. So auto select column underlay. You can do a pattern. Uh, play around with it. See what you think. For now, we're just going to do them. So here we go. Now we want to, I want to close, make the gap here closer because then we won't have to do any running stitches. If you decide to make these pieces further apart, then you can just put a little running stitch here to the next one and then down. And these ones are almost touching. I wouldn't suggest doing them all in one piece if you put them closer because it might go funny right here. Now also remember that even though the artwork you start here, my embroidery starts here. So you have to keep that in mind when you're digitizing. You have to remember where your actual embroidery is. And if you forget, flip to the 3D and you can see. So what I'm pointing out, if you started the uh, you know the designs here it would be kind of weird we kind of want it at the top plus if you are you know making them further apart you want to be able to hide the jump stitches right and you'd be able to do that in the outline that we're going to do okay so we're getting that so i'm going to go up a little further than what it is and place my first point down and then i'm going to click all the way at the bottom which is fine and make a nice curve and i think all the way up yeah and then we'll curve it out a little bit I think that'll probably look good now remember we're working kind of small so these uh, satin stitches will be just fine at this width and there we go let's change the color how about a green we haven't done a green on a tropical Frank there we go let's 3d see how good that looks see I'm liking that and the tip here is just perfect that's we're gonna be able to hide it we're almost done Frank believe it or not you guys have almost created a perfect uh, embroidery design with no jump stitches or trim there's there's a few color changes but that's cool because Frank would like to be you know more colored so let's uh, center this a little bit I think it's okay let's try it though and we're gonna do the same thing auto column and if you forget just go into your uh, parameters and uh, do it that way and should it go down see remember hmm I think here I think like this and we don't want it too wide or anything there we go you can zoom in a little bit if you want to there we go generate I did it kind of crooked but I actually kind of like it now there is a tiny jump stitch from there to there but we will make sure that it's covered up um, you can't see it yet but I will make it's gonna go from here to here so I'm gonna make darn sure that that's covered up in the end now you can copy this one over right click and copy and then uh, right click no nope, edit Paste. Control V. Oh, it's the same as on the computer. Mental, mental break there. And then all we want to do is, you know, you could flip it, I guess, if you wanted to. You could turn it around. But I want to do one myself. So anyways, you could copy and paste and put it in place. And that would be nice and fast. And it would look very smooth and everything. But my Frank bug is a strange bug. And he's going to be a little offside. So we finished there. Let's go right about here and place the point down and there stretch it to curve see he's going to be different so my frank's different than your frank and i'm going to i want them to end up at the same place but i want them to have a little bit of a different shape and i think it's going to look good and i kind of like how that 
turned out. Yeah. So it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. You may want to make this a little bit straighter than I did, but I don't know. I think our Frank is good that way. I kind of like it. Let's flip over to the 3D and see. If you want to go check your density map, I mean, there's a couple layers here and these are small, but generally that looks fantastic. Green is good. Red is, uh, you know, it's getting a little bit dense, but a little bit here. If this was all red, I'd be like, woo, you need to fix that. But we're good. So we're good on that. Now, the only thing we need to do, and you don't actually have to do it, but I thought it looked kind of like a finishing touch and we do want to cover up stuff. I'm actually going to move this up a little bit and my crooked back line there up a little bit. I kind of like that a little bit better. And so if you don't want to do an outline on Frank, you don't have to. This would be fine. You'd have a little bit of jump stitches. Eh, not much you can do about it. Um, I thought an outline just kind of finished it off and again we can play around with how it looks we ended up there So oh, we got to do the head first. Oh, yeah So let's do that sketch stitch which I find enjoyable and we're gonna do it so click and it, Remember when we were doing our head we have to click in between and then here now We don't have to do any more than that uh, you could do automatic outline, but you know, we're, we're doing this. We're doing this. That looks good. You have to have everything overlapped. I may have forgotten to say that. Oh, that looks good. Oh, maybe even green too. Uh, let's try black. See how you can just change it? Yeah, I like that. Look at that. The head and the body needs to be overlapped. Um, you know, a decent amount. It has to be. Let's go back here. Uh, let's see what I have. I need to overlap him more. Do you see? I, I kind of didn't do it right there. Uh, look at it once I highlight it. This is overlapped. This isn't. This isn't. So what's going to happen when you stitch it out and you do some push-pull? That is, when you stitch it out on any fabric, that is going to um, kind of leave a gap, I guess. It's, it's not cool. Not cool. So I forgot to mention that. Uh, it happens, right? I'd like you to overlap stuff about that much. And remember, the blue is going to cover it, so we don't need to worry about it. The blue is going to cover everything. So have your overlap, then you don't have to worry at all. Let's generate this. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I'd like to have it a little more overlap here. See what I did there? I still didn't quite do it correctly. And that would possibly give us a gap. And we don't want that. We don't want that. That'll kind of ruin the whole embroidery. That looks better. There we go. We're rocking. There we go. Good Frank. Good Frank. And now we have kind of like an, a groovy outline which, like I said, you can leave it as a color. You can leave it as black. I'm thinking maybe a green. Maybe we could carry on with our green. Um, in which case, now black. I was gonna say we finished off here. We could run here and do, well, let's do that. So let's change that to green. And this will help you guys out with plotting and mistakes. See, I changed my mind completely. So uh, let's look, let's make sure we know where did I start? Does anyone remember? I started here. This is the last one. Yep, I started there. So that's just a quick reminder. Uh, and now I moved everything. <laughs> wow, come on, come on. I moved it and I didn't put it back right. So let's fix that. Let's just fix that. Let's generate that. Good enough. Okay, good enough. Deselect it. So um, I started there. I finished there. So what we want to do is a quick little run stitch from there to there. So no jump stitches. Thank you, Frank. You are so optimized, Frank. You are so optimized. I would put it a little more down there and generate. And perfect. There we go. And now we stitch to there and we ended up here and now we want to keep on going and all of what we're going to do next is going to cover up all these joins so yay no jump stitches again so let's go here to here 
let's actually it's kind of hard to see let's go oh that makes it even more difficult to see i usually zoom in a bit more but people always tell me that it's difficult to see the big picture when i do that so i'm trying to do it out further than i need to be and it's kind of i have a hard time finding the nodes which is another good reason to not put too many nodes right uh they're hard to see sometimes there we go we just kind of want it just you know in a little bit this is going to give frank his final shape hopefully a good shape and hopefully whoops there to there hopefully uh frank looks good right when we do it and we've almost done it this is you know drum roll please there we go and pull it in here and right where we started off don't forget where you started off there and we're going to make the satin stitches uh leave the density and the pull comp i am going to leave the underlay and let's generate it and generate and we have pretty good looking frank bug i mean it looks weird up close when you stitch this guy out he's going to be fine let's check on our density map a little bit dense in there a little bit but i don't think it's anything to worry about um maybe take the um the underlay off of this let's see if that works i don't think it's anything to worry about but auto select underlay i don't think we need any more center we could do a zigzag so let's see how that looks generate stitches and let's go to the density map it's about the same so it doesn't make any difference it's just where these are ending so we don't need to worry about it he will stitch out fine so what do you guys think wow what do you guys think i am pretty happy let's watch him stitch just quickly how we've created him again you might want to tweak some things but let's just watch him stitch and you can revel in the lack of jump stitches or stops or anything so far that's perfect yep yep now that went back and down because there is an underlay on the satin stitch which you can remove because the walking stitch kind of replaces it it's just a little bit confusing um if you think you made a mistake so i didn't though some nice underlay there looking good if you don't want it to separate then change the start and stop points but it's okay it's a normal thing now the body what do you guys think I, i'm pretty happy with that pretty happy now what you guys can do when you are um just let me talk while this is stitching out when you guys are working on this yourself um have the class playing on your ipad or on your phone so you can see and then it's easy for you to pause and keep working and it makes it a lot easier and you can uh you know do a little bit then work and do a little bit and then work i guess we could speed them up you're a bit slow there it's just fill stitches right there we go and then now we are look at them go all the way up and to the next one for some reason it put a trim in there so i see a mistake and this is why i always tell everybody you need to do the simulator it walked over it just did it pretty quickly there we go you need to do there's our zigzag stitch we just put in you need to do the st stitch simulator because i can see that there's a couple of mistakes and all we have to do is change the start and stop points um, but it's a good way i thought it was going just fine it turns out there's mistakes so it's a good idea to you know test stitch it before you actually stitch it and then still watch it stitch out and you still might find another mistake so tweak that up make sure all your start and stop points are good you just go in and change them and make it all work properly and that is how you stitch out mr frank bug without any jump stitches except for the ones i made a mistake on but you fix them and that's how you do it and you guys can be proud of yourself this is level one there is more to come we have 
Chester B is the intermediate connections and he's a little bit difficult to or a little more difficult to plot out and then the third one we have is Betty Butterfly so uh, you guys are gonna love it don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video and leave a comment to me just to let me know that you guys want more videos like just like this and uh, head on over to Facebook it's OML Embroidery University and that's where you can post your homework if you have any problems with your homework uh, people are there to help out a lot of people will be doing the class and it's also just a great embroidery place to be so thanks everyone for watching I'll see you guys in the next video